since the latest NVIDIA driver 546.01 has come out, there's a new setting in the NVIDIA control panel called CUDA SysMem Fallback Policy. Now, what, you may be thinking, what is that? How does it affect performance? Well, let's find out. So sit down, strap in, let's go. Right guys, as mentioned in the intro, today I'll be having a look at 546.01 but more aptly, there's a new setting in the NVIDIA control panel and the Manage 3D settings, you'll see there's a CUDA slash system fallback policy. So within this category you have driver default, prefer no system fallback and prefer system fallback. So just to go over this and show you exactly what it's all about. So there we go, description, CUDA may allow allocations made in GPU memory to fall back to system memory RAM in certain situations to comply with the Windows Display Driver model, WDDM. So in a nutshell, I'm not going to read all of it, but in a nutshell what it's saying is if your VRAM capacity um, is exceeded, it's going to fall back to system memory to make sure that your, your, um, your game doesn't crash or that the textures don't show up properly in my understanding so before i get to my results guys if you are subscribed to the channel please just make sure that all the notifications are set to all so that you are notified whenever i do drop a new video and in the meantime please hit a like a comment and a share on this video it really will help to those of you that aren't subscribed please consider subscribing by the end of the video if you find this content helpful and then on my homepage, I have a whole bunch of videos that you can tuck into. Full CPU optimization guide shows you how to undervolt if you got a 10th gen or newer CPU. Uh, this is for 9th gen and older. And then there are also videos on uh, throw stop, MSI afterburner, you name it. But guys, let's get to those results. So um, I, in my previous video, I compared 546.01 versus a 545.92. And my conclusion was that 5.46 or 546.01 was act, especially if you're on a GTX laptop, was um, quite a step back because as you can see here, the 1% lows of the latest driver are quite low. In fact, uh, over these 13 games, the 1% lows are 13 lower, and then you can see the the 0.1% lows are about 20. 20 FPS lower over those 13 games. So the, um, the latest driver did offer up stability issues. However, once we go to the results of this test, CUDA system fallback policy, and what I did is I included that benchmark I did on the previous driver over here, just, so, just as a point of reference. But guys, um, as mentioned, I tested CUDA system fallback policy. This is on NVIDIA driver 546.01. All my games are tested at medium settings, except for the newer titles. I do test on a GTX 1650 laptop. So obviously I've got limitations when it comes to the newer games this year, so they're on low. I do test on single player games because I find it to be more reliable data. And lastly, I use FSR 2.1 or 2.0 on quality. So guys, um, so my three different benchmarks were those three settings in the NVIDIA control panel. Uh, when you set CUDA system fallback policy to default, prefer system fallback on, and then prefer system fallback on off. So I'll start off with driver default, which was uh, the way I tested the driver 546.01 against 545.4, I guess it says 0.42, but it's actually 0.92. Um, and uh, in that test, uh, 546.01 was a little bit behind the previous driver. But a test on driver default, that's why. Because driver default is not the setting you should be using. So when I on driver default, when I add up all the average FPS, I get to 856. When I add up all the 1% lows, I get to 635. And then when I add up all the 0.1% lows, I get to 507. So if you compare driver default of the latest driver versus the previous driver, which didn't have that option in the NVIDIA control panel, it would look that... 546.01 is in fact a worse driver but that's why i recommend you don't use driver default the next setting i tested was prefer system fallback for cuda system fallback policy when i add up all the one uh, average fps i get to 857 so not much of a change 
when I add up all the 1% lows, I get to 643. So you can see with prefer system fallback on as opposed to driver default, there's already an improvement in 1% lows. When I add up all the 0.1% lows, you can see there's also an improvement over uh, from prefer system fallback on versus driver default. But the, uh, the setting I actually recommend you use is prefer system fallback because um, yeah, the results are just the best. Let me just show you. When I add up all the average FPS, I get to a total amount of 864. When I add up all the 1% lows, I get to 648. So that's comparable to uh, when NVIDIA Control Panel didn't have that setting. So you're actually winning back all that performance you lost by them adding in preferred system fallback. So put system fallback off. And then when I add up all the 0.1% lows, you get to a, a 0.1% uh, low total of 520. So the, the only thing that's a little bit of a drawback is the 0.1% lows. But if you set, let me just show you quickly. If you are going to be using 546.01, which does have its strengths, what I do recommend is you go into the NVIDIA control panel and system fallback policy. So you've got driver default, prefer no system fallback and prefer system fallback set it to prefer no system fallback that's going to be your best setting for the best one percent lows and the best zero one percent lows the reason i uh, i might recommend the latest driver 546.01 is if you've got an underspec laptop like i do i've i've got a gtx 1650 laptop i am playing alan wake so alan wake has got a minimum vram requirement of six gigabytes um, I've only got four gigabytes of VRAM, so quite often in the game, my, my textures become very, um, it's, I'd, I'd say it's 50-50, my textures go very blurred and you can't really see the, so well what's happening on the screen. So that's why uh, having a uh, preferred system fallback on could be to your advantage because maybe the, the, um, the, the RAM is a little bit slower than VRAM, but still those missing textures will load into your RAM and sooner or later those textures will appear to be normal bit of a mouthful but if you got a game where you are limited by vram prefer system fallback might be a good option for you but anyways guys thank you so much for watching if you enjoyed this video be sure to smash that like button if you have any questions please hit me up in the comment section and as always guys if you're still watching and you haven't subscribed as of yet now is the time to do so it's almost the weekend have a good day it's people like you cheers